Chapter 4 Magic Questions Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Arthur C. Clarke Magic Questions As mentioned in the introduction, a magic question is the capstone of the prospecting conversation. In fact, most of the conversation is dedicated to setting the stage for the magic question. What is a magic question? A magic question uncovers whether the prospect wants to learn about your business opportunity. Read the previous sentence again. There is a huge difference between learning about and joining. Always keep this distinction in mind. What is so magical about a magic question? Think about it. You ask a total stranger if he would like to learn about some nebulous opportunity that you don't explain and the prospect says yes, if that isn't magic, what is? What a magic question is not. It is paramount that you understand what a magic question is not. Not an explanation. A magic question is not the point in your conversation to explain your opportunity. In fact, in the initial conversation with a prospect, resist every temptation to explain your opportunity. You are the messenger, not the message. Let your prospecting tools be the message. Your company's prospecting tools incorporate multiple aspects, such as visual and emotional, to intrigue the prospect. Chances are you do not know how to deliver a message with the same impact as the tools. Even if you do have the skills, ask yourself this, does your team have the skills? If you have the skills and your team doesn't, then you have not demonstrated a process that can be reproduced, i.e., duplicated, by your team. In other words, your business will never grow beyond what you can do by yourself. For the sake of your team, your business, and your sanity, keep it simple. Use the tools. Not an invitation to join. Magic questions are not an invitation to join your company. The prospect doesn't have enough information to give you an answer to that question yet, and it's not fair for you to ask. Remember, prospecting is all about the prospect. Maximize his ability to evaluate your offer properly one step at a time. Contents of a magic question The content of your magic question is critical. An effective magic question has two characteristics. 1. Deals with objections. The best time to deal with objections is before the prospect raises them. The magic question is the best place to deal with the most common objections. A carefully crafted magic question can virtually eliminate one or more objections. 2. Hard to say no to. The philosophy behind the principles of prospecting is to create a low-friction conversation. An effective prospecting conversation will prepare the prospect for your magic question. Your magic question, in turn, will minimize any resistance the prospect may have to accepting your offer. In other words, a good magic question will make it difficult for the prospect to say no. Make sure your question does not contain words or phrases that are likely to raise a red flag. Here are some phrases to avoid. 1. Business 2. Join 3. Home-based 4. Ground floor 5. Part-time 6. Involved 7. Extra income 8. My wife and I 9. Opportunity, singular form. 10. You'd be so good. 11. Ought to do what I'm doing. The above phrases are overused in smack of an inexperienced approach. An effective magic question will cause the prospect to believe that it would be risky for him to say no, at the same time, you want him to realize that saying yes is not at all risky. Delivery The way you deliver your magic question has a direct bearing on how the prospect will receive it. There are three elements to the effective delivery of a magic question, transition, setup, and voice. 1. Transition One key aspect of delivering a magic question is a smooth transition to the question. It doesn't make sense to have a short conversation and then suddenly blurt out an offer of opportunity. Doing so would be amateurish and completely ineffective. The best way to ensure a smooth transition is to use transition phrases. Later in the book, Two Principles, Mental Judo, and You Let the Dogs Out, Chapters 10 and 11, respectively, address transitions in detail. 2. Setup You only get to ask the magic question one time. 
make sure you have the prospect's attention before you ask it. You want him to pay attention, and you want him to know that you expect a response. If you set him up before the question, things will work out fine. The example later in this chapter illustrates how to do this. For your information, just answer me one question. Samuel Goldwyn. 3. Voice. An effective magic question will come across as a natural part of the conversation. If the prospect detects a significant shift in the conversation, he will raise his guard. One way to make sure your manner seems natural is to maintain the same voice. Take care to use the same tone, the same volume, and the same cadence, speed, as you ask the question. It's also important to speak clearly. Generally, you get one shot at delivering the magic question. Don't blow it with poor enunciation. Speak clearly and pace yourself by using strategic pauses. If the prospect is unable to follow you, you're wasting your time. The example below illustrates the use of pauses. Examples The text below spells out a magic question that works really well. I use it more often than I do any of the others. This question is generic and works for any opportunity. The commas represent pauses of about a half second each. Raw phrase Jack, let me ask you a question. Are you at all open to exploring outside opportunities as long as they don't conflict with what you're already doing? Outline Jack, let me ask you a question. Pause, are you at all open? Pause to explore. Outside opportunities pause as long as they don't conflict. Pause with what you're already doing. Notes. 1. The setup this statement gets the prospect's attention and lets him know that you are expecting a response. If you don't yet know the prospect's name, start with let dot. 2. This phrase is a qualifier, aka, a tie-down. If Jack responds with no, he is admitting that he is closed-minded and would never be open to exploring. This is a risky position for him to take because he does not yet know what he is saying no to. 3. Tells Jack that he would merely be looking, not doing. This is a low-risk activity not requiring commitment. Making it easy for him to say yes. For a clue that his participation will be above and beyond his current job or business. It's a way of saying part-time without actually using that phrase. 5. This is the crux of the entire conversation. Notice the use of the plural form. You're not asking if he would be interested in your one and only opportunity. Instead, you're asking if he is open to opportunities in general. This subtle difference dramatically increases the likelihood of Jack accepting your offer. 6. This priceless phrase generally eliminates the objection of I don't have time. What the prospect hears is it won't take too much time. With this phrase, you are acknowledging that the prospect is already busy which deals with the time objection before he brings it up. It also deals with the objection my boss doesn't want me doing anything else. A less common objection but the question deals with it automatically. This magic question has evolved through years of practice. It generates amazing results when delivered correctly as part of a properly developed conversation. This particular magic question does, however, have one distinct disadvantage, it's complex. This makes it harder to memorize, harder to enunciate, and harder to understand. That is why pauses and lots of practice are necessary. The question above is provided as the first example because it illustrates how an effective magic question can alleviate objections. You may, however, get better results when you first start by using one of the simpler magic questions listed next. Other examples do you look at other ways to make money if they don't take too much time? Are you at a point in life where you would be open to exploring outside opportunities? Are you making all the money you can stand? Degree do you ever feel like you're worth more than you're getting paid? Do you keep your income options open? Do you keep your options open? Do you ever explore other ways to make money? Are you open to exploring additional streams of income? Are you open to exploring outside options? If, could show you a way to double your free time without affecting your income, would we have something to talk about? The possibilities are endless. As you examine these magic questions, notice that they share several characteristics. 1. Of all else, they are questions. You want a yes or no answer, 
so ask a yes or no question. The person asking the questions controls the conversation. 2. They avoid the red flag phrases identified earlier in this chapter. 3. They contain different words, but they sound similar. That's because all magic questions have the same basic goal, is to find out if the prospect has enough interest to accept your prospecting tool. The subtle differences in wording allow you to tailor your question to the prospect, see chameleon of many colors in chapter 14. This is the end of chapter 4. Please subscribe and share for more valuable videos.